No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mandel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. For all those joining us this evening on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms, we say good evening, universe, and welcome to the Illegal Curve post-game show. I am Drew Mandel. As you saw there, Dave Manouk poking his head in, uh, literally, sort of like a, like a groundhog. He's downtown in Winnipeg watching overtime between the Manitoba Moose and I believe the Grand Rapids Griffins, if I'm not mistaken. Dave will join us momentarily uh, here on the post-game show uh, as the overtime eventually comes to a conclusion but we're here on this Sunday evening the Sunday evening of a long weekend to discuss the Winnipeg Jets they drop a decision in New Jersey by a 4-2 margin the Devils a team that were playing the second half of a back-to-back situation frankly were the better of the two teams a game that the Winnipeg Jets needed to show better they needed to have a better response than they had on Thursday night against the Columbus Blue Jackets and frankly they were outclassed in my estimation by the New Jersey Devils the Devils simply put were faster they were harder on pucks they had a they had a a stronger will to win then the Winnipeg Jets did. The Jets had a 2-1 lead going into the third period. When you have that lead against the team on the second half of a back-to-back, this is a well-rested Winnipeg Jets team. They needed to come out in that third period, take control of the game, and place an emphasis on the need to win this game because we know it's not getting any easier heading to New York tomorrow night to face the Rangers. This is a Winnipeg Jets team that frankly is struggling right now and objects in the rear view mirror are closer than they appear and they keep getting closer by the day. Colorado Avalanche, they're now two points behind the Winnipeg Jets with a game in hand after the Avalanche staged a comeback earlier this afternoon, defeating the Edmonton Oilers by a 6-5 margin. The Minnesota Wild, they also won earlier this afternoon against the Nashville Predators. They are now you know, only four points behind the Winnipeg Jets. Each team has played the same number of games. Things are getting tight quickly for the Winnipeg Jets and something needs to give because as we talked about in length on yesterday's illegal curve hockey show, the schedule is not getting any easier for the Winnipeg Jets. It's East heavy. And we know the Jets have struggled against the East because the East is the better of the conferences. It's playoff team heavy Lots of games against the playoff teams. The only games that aren't against the playoff teams really are the Islanders games are going to be sort of on the cusp if they're a playoff team or if they're not. Right now they are uh, after tonight's contest and after a majority of tonight's action in the NHL. I think there's all, still only one game going on. It's between the Blue Jackets and the Coyotes, and that doesn't really count because nobody gives a damn about those two teams given this records that they've had this year, albeit the Blue Jackets winning the last two games against Dallas and And the Jets and the Coyotes have actually been playing good hockey as of late. But ultimately, it's not going to matter uh, for either of those two teams in the playoffs. When they play against each other, they'll have an opportunity, of course, to play spoiler. So what of the Winnipeg Jets? We know that it was a line blender kind of game. We know that in the practice that they had yesterday, no skate this morning. In the practice that they had yesterday, it was a new look Winnipeg Jets team. There was a lot of two scores and a checker. You saw guys like Connor and Dubois with Saku Manalainen along the along their side. Didn't work. It didn't work. Manalainen is effective five on four. We saw him be effective five on four during today's game. He drew a penalty uh, on Thomas Tatar late in the third period. That put the Jets, it it made it into a four on four situation. And then it made it into a five on four, a Jets power play. Well, the power play didn't work for the Winnipeg Jets. That was a point of emphasis. Power play was lousy again tonight. 
Just no, it had some chances in the third period. Cole Perfetti shoveled one way wide when he was in a good scoring opportunity. Uh, Josh Morrissey missed on one where he looked like he was in a decent opportunity, but ultimately the power play wasn't any good tonight. Connor Dubois, Manalainen, eh, it ain't going to work. Saku Manalainen is too limited as a player. And you just saw it up and down the Jets lineup tonight. There were just, it, it was a bit of trying to pound a square peg into a round pole, a round hole, pardon me. I understand the logic behind it. I don't mind the idea about it, but what it screams to me as we sit here less than two weeks before the NHL trade deadline is it shows off the warts on this Winnipeg Jets team, particularly among the forward group. You can see it. There is just nothing there offensively beyond the top six. And so when the coach needs to try and change things around, Rick Bonus. he's just sort of throwing things at the wall and seeing what's going to stick, if anything. Well, I think we've learned enough, you know, that this isn't going to work. The, the, the mix of players in the bottom six, are they have their limitations. It's not to say they're not tremendous hockey players or excellent uh, you know, or, or, or you know, or, or quality NHL players, but they have their limitations. It's a bottom six right now that is, you know, it, it's got almost blinders in that they just aren't offensively inclined. Meanwhile, you look at the New Jersey Devils bottom six today, and the Devils get goals from the bottom of their lineup. And even if they didn't get them from the bottom of the lineup, you can see that the bottom of the Devils lineup is more effective than the Winnipeg Jets lineup. You got guys like Miles Wood, Michael McLeod. Uh, you know, these guys are are not household names by any stretch. They're not exciting players, but they have a they bring something to the table. They bring something to the table. The they and frankly, on on both the Devils game winning goal and game tying goal, they beat some of the Jets better players. They were harder on the puck than some of the Jets' better players. They had the will to win more than the Jets' players did in those instances. It can't happen. It can't happen. You can't, if you're Kyle Connor, you can't lose that puck battle. If you're Adam Lauer, you can't lose that puck battle. Those are are, are just inexcusable. You have to find a way to, to win those puck battles if you're a member of the Winnipeg, if you're a member of the Winnipeg Jets in those instances. There's just no other alternative then winning those, it's gone to a shootout is what I'm seeing now uh, in downtown Winnipeg. So Dave M is, is, is backstage here, folks, is, is what he is. He's backstage sort of giving me a thumbs up as to what's happening uh, with the Moose game. So that he's going to join us shortly thereafter. In the meantime, it's the Drew Mandel experience, and we're all in for a wild ride as we usually are when I have the conch on a, on a night like tonight. To me, <laughs> just so you know, Drew, I am listening. I know you're listening. See that I, we can see you just popping your head in there like a little groundhog every now and then, just 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 showing up every now and then, uh, you know. But to me, it's it's now time for Kevin Shovel Day off to earn his keep, and we know what Kevin Shovel Day off is as a general manager. He's very cautious, likes to take his time, likes to wait and wait and wait before making a move, but the time is nigh. Unless you're not going to go for it. Unless you're not going to go for it. If you're not going to go for it, then you stand pat. And that's the sign that you're sending to the players in the dressing room, that you don't think they're good enough. I don't foresee him doing that because of how wide open the West is. We've talked about it. Can any of these Western Conference teams play against the East? Well, you don't have to worry about that until the Stanley Cup final. Once you get into the playoffs, of course, but let's assume that the playoffs are still, you know, for for the argument's sake. Even though I know that you know the playoff line is getting closer, but the collapse would be epic if that was to happen. And if it was, then obviously we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But once you get into the playoffs, especially in the West, you don't have to worry about the East until the Cup Finals. And if you say you get to the Cup Finals, I think people are going to be pretty happy. It doesn't matter else what what happens there. So you're a member of the Winnipeg Jets. You're a member of the front office. Do you think you can win the West with your current lineup? 
if you do, good good on you. I think you're delusional. That's just me. I'm just a guy sitting in my electrical room talking to a bunch of good people here on the internet. But I don't think this Jets team can win the West. I just don't. They're, 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 they're too limited in, in, in too many areas, particularly up front. And I know the argument about the back end. Neil Pionk had a great game tonight. So Neil Pionk, who's been the victim of a lot of slings and arrows and everything else uh, as of late, deservingly so. He hasn't had a great couple of years. Good game, Tim, for tonight. Goal and assist for Neil Pionk tonight. You can't take it away from him. You can't criticize him when he when he you can't criticize him when he doesn't have it and not praise him when he does. He brought it tonight. He was a good player for the Winnipeg Jets. Does Kevin Shevel Day off believe in the rest of the this team that they can make a run as currently constructed? I don't think they can. I really don't. You just look at the teams that are near them, you look at the teams that are elsewhere in the West, the way they currently are. There is Dave M. A hatless Dave M. So you get to see the wild uh, fro in action. You know, you know what I was saying, Dave, and I know you could hear me. As I was saying, you know, when does Kevin Shevel Day off have to strike now? You know, it's now less than two weeks before the trade deadline. The Jets are currently in the in a struggle, and they have been struggling for a lot since the new year. This has not been a great hockey team. This has been a average at best hockey team, I would say. So when do they? jump on a, a move to try and inject some life into this team that has been average at best and missed another golden opportunity tonight to keep the the, the braying hounds at bay. He's going to mute himself and a little bit of the background noise to go away for a second there. Look, I, I agree with what he said there. So it's it's now incumbent. Look, Rick Bonus has, I think, squeezed all he can out of this team. And this team has had... A, a good season up to this point you know they and it's not to say that this you know that the panic button necessarily needs to be pressed because you know they are still in second spot in the central division so it's not like they're, they're you know out of a playoff spot and you know uh, uh, teams are passing them so let's again keep perspective about it because if that happens then it's then it would be time to actually go ahead and and, and say that so let's keep some perspective. But, you know, the Jets are still in second in the Central Division, but it's clear that they're not good enough as constructed to be considered among the best of the West. I mean, in a seven-game series or in a playoff battle against some of the other teams, against Colorado, and I know, you know, Colorado has been injury-riddled all year. True. And... Sorry about that. My mic wasn't actually connected. So that's why everybody's oh, saying my sound was so bad. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't actually see the comments. So then I'm looking and I'm like, what? What do you mean my sound is so bad? And then I just realized that it was reading. Uh, it wasn't off this mic. It was trying to pick it up off the computer. So my apologies to everybody. You know, usually I'm at home. The sound is down. There's no music you have to deal with. So hopefully I'm sound. How am I sounding now? Can you hear now, me all right, Drew? Yeah, now you sound great. Now all you right. Sound, I'm all right. That- I'm thrilled that you don't have uh, that you weren't aware that you didn't plug in fully, but that's the no, 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 no. I was plugged in, but you know, sometimes with the settings, you have to change it uh, to uh, the AM PM. You got it. Like, it's the old AM, AM PM, PM. Jean Paul. It was the yeah. old AM PM. So I apologize to everyone who was complaining about uh, who were complaining about the sound that I was coming through. Not very clearly. I will edit it in the podcast so people won't even have to hear my little soliloquy. Continue. There you go. Fair enough. Uh, update uh, from NH from Jets head coach Rick Bonus. This courtesy of our buddy Mike McIntyre, who of course is on the road. Uh, there is no update on Nikolai Ehlers. So the update on Nikolai Ehlers from Rick Bonus is that there is no update, uh, no news about any potential injury and or availability for tomorrow, as the Jets of course will head short, uh, not far from where they currently are. In fact, they're staying in the same hotel. And they're going to uh, and they're going to be facing the New York Rangers in Madison Square Garden uh, tomorrow tomorrow evening. As the Jets well, it's not like and... they've won seven in a row or anything. Well, I mean, you're you're playing against the big boys. This is what you are. You're playing against the the es- upper echelon of the NHL. I mean, you look at the standings, and we talked about this multiple times. The best teams are are in the East, and it's not even close. I mean, the worst yeah. team among the top three. Uh, teams in each division is, is Tampa Bay, and they have 73 points. Well, 73 points is better than any team in the Western Conference. So third place in the Atlantic is top spot in the Western Conference. So it just goes to show you just how good the East has been and, and, and how and how significant the difference has been between the East and the West this year. 
So it's on Kevin Shovel Day off. You know, you, if you always wait till the deadline, you might miss out on some players. There might be other moves that are made if you are not, you know, I know you don't necessarily want to always jump to the head of the class, but sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to just for what it does to your dressing room, for what it does, because the, the schedule is a beast. You know, it is. And so injecting some additional talent does twofold. One, it makes your talent, your lineup more talented, which the Jets clearly need. And two, it's beyond a boost of confidence. It's beyond a vote of confidence for the players in that dressing room who've come so far, who've come through, you know, what is it, 56 games now this year that they mm. get this extra motivation. We talked about it with Jeff O'Neill yesterday on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. You know, that we talked about it yesterday, about what it does when you go out and acquire players like that. So, you know, that that's the that's where the Jets are at, I think, at this point in time. They need to do something to to get everything uh, to give uh, the the just a boost in the dressing room uh, after yet another loss tonight uh, against the New Jersey Devils, a game the Jets simply had to have taking a 2-1 lead into the third period against a team playing the second half of a back-to-back. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, first of all, the Devils are playing very good hockey, right? Sure. They're not exactly a slouch, uh, you know, despite the fact that, like you said, and I was going to mention that, they did play last night and won in Pittsburgh, I believe. So the mm-hmm. Devils five are... 5-2, I think, in Pittsburgh last yeah, night. They yeah, won. so the Devils are rolling as well. But you're right, Drew. I mean, it's it's we talked about it with Jeff O'Neill, and that was the other point I was going to make that you, you pointed it, but I'll reiterate it. Because I think it's important. I mean, that is the idea, that boost in the room. You know, I mean, sorry, if you're going to go and what was the Jets' big ac- acquisition? Uh, was it uh, was it Jordy Ben? No, Jamie. No, Jordy Ben. When? Last you know, year? Yeah. You oh, know, Mason no, no, Appleton. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying two years. You know, I'm saying oh, like okay. when the Jets do these acquisitions. I mean, yes, you, yes, you're yes. right. You don't wait till the deadline. You, you don't have to. There's no obligation. You don't have a contractual obligation with TSN or Sportsnet, whoever hosting, uh, you know, uh, to make sure that their show will, won't be terrible. Yeah. Talking about absolutely nothing, but look at the end of the day, this is this team. Like I said, I the the, the lifespan of this team as it's currently constructed is a year it's and a half. The, it's yeah, it's you're, a you're, year and a half. You're right. a year and a half away from the way this from this core being done. Right? We've talked about it. Hellebuck Wheeler, and you can still. I'm not saying you can't re up some of these guys, but at the end of the day, you know you're going to have to really take this window. And you can augment it, right? Some teams don't. Look at the Rangers. Rangers are a perfect example of a team that said, listen, guys, we're going to have to retool a little bit on the fly, but we're not planning a rebuild. We're just going to do a retool. And the Rangers did it. And the Rangers, you know, I mean, it helps when you get a goalie like Shesterkin. But the the fact of the matter is that the Rangers were able to do it. So some teams can do it. I'm not suggesting the Jets are going to do that right now. Mm -hmm. But I think that the Jets are in a position to to have to really say, looking at this group, and people can say, oh, this core is not good enough, this, 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 and this. But at the end of the day, the West, Jeff O'Neill said it, guys. That Jeff O'Neill played a lot of games in the NHL. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, what did he say? He said that a team has a key injury. Let me look at the Colorado Avalanche. I mean, the Colorado Avalanche had a, a, a lion's share of injuries this year. Now they're they're gelling right now and they're producing and they're you know roaring back up the standings. But the fact is that one team has one or two injuries, or a couple of teams have a couple of key injuries. And you know, we've talked about how weak this Western conference is. Yeah, I mean, the Jets aren't, it's not uh, with, with a goalie like Connor Hellebuck, the Jets and a couple of moves. I mean, hey, maybe if Calgary's really going to move on from uh, Uyghur, maybe you can get a nice little right side uh, well, Mackenzie I mean, Uyghur. I'm not saying that they're going to, which would be insane if they actually did. But, you know, you're hearing rumblings in Calgary. Mm-hmm. I suspect they won't. But but ultimately, you know, maybe you do something that helps augment the right side of your of your D, push everyone down a, a, a section. And again, like I said, add some some wing depth to the, help this team out because I know people are saying this team isn't going to get it done, but I, I just don't think it's very realistic to suggest that Kevin Shovel Dayoff is going to do anything. I'm not saying he's going to go big game hunting, and get Timo Meyer, but I don't think he's not going to do anything because he right. wants, but you have to do it. Uh, I think the point is you, you can't always wait. You can't wait till March the 2nd. Oh yeah, for sure. You can't wait till March the 2nd. You wait till March the 2nd, the way this team has been playing as of late. Pardon me, March the 3rd. That's when the trade deadline is, the Friday. Right. Friday night. Uh, yeah. Friday night. The Jets play a back-to-back third and the fourth. They play Edmonton and Edmonton back-to-back. Yeah. If you wait that long, given the schedule that's in front of you, yeah. you you might be in more – it might be even more of a – you right now, 
you have a little bit of a buffer if you make that move and you try and, and you try and give the team a, a boost it's it, you know it, it's not like the piano is fully on their back if they continue to struggle like they have been largely over the last month or six weeks i'm gonna say you know they've been average you know who knows where they're at come march the march the third that's why I think time is of the essence in this instance. It's now is the time to try and get it done if you're going to do it. Waiting to dead for the deadline is is nice and good and and everything else. Oftentimes, I understand why that is. It's a business practice to deadline hunt, and it usually can be an effective one. But in some instances, you can't necessarily wait right up until the deadline. In some instances, you need to you need to you know act sooner than you may necessarily or typically want to. And I think right now that is one of the times where they need to do it. I mean, yeah, it, it just it just needs to happen. I think sooner rather than later. I don't expect it's going to because you know the best indicator of of of, of future behavior is, is past behavior. And Kevin Chevaldeoff doesn't usually defer from uh, or divert from his from his course of action. But now would be the time I think to do so in, in my estimation. Let's get into the game recap uh, 25 minutes into the post game show. Uh, this is bet day. The Betway game recap is, of course, brought to you by Betway, one of the most trusted voices in sports betting, both in Canada and all around the world. Betway is a sports betting app that puts you, the customer, at the forefront with a large selection of betting options in sports, as well as strong promotions and fair odds. What are you waiting for? Head on over to Betway and bet your way. Must be 19 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. It's a back and forth start to the first period. The Jets were did not get very many shots on goal. They only had six shots on goal in the entire first period. But for a while there, that was only one shot on goal until Cole Perfetti at the 1457 mark of the first period gets the Jets on the board. It's his eighth of the season assist to Mark Shifley and Neil Pionk. Bodies in front of the net is what we heard ad nauseum over and over and over again. But this is an instance where the Jets had more bodies in front of Mackenzie Blackwood than the Devils had defenders. And as a result, the puck comes onto uh, Cole Perfetti's stick, and he's able to uh, go up top and beat Blackwood to give the Jets a one nothing lead. This is what they had talked about in the pregame and lead up to today's game, and they executed it, and it's one nothing for the Jets at this point in time. That was going to be my cue to let you talk. If you, I drew. I was trying to get tweets out here. You know, I got to get some tweets out. Scheduling tweets. You know, this is it's a two. It's when it's a two man show. It's a little bit different than when it's you and Ezzy and I. Right. So uh, I can't, you know, pretend like I'm paying attention, but I'm listening. Yes, I know you're listening. Listening and tweeting at the same time. Listening and tweeting at the same time. So just trying to get this this done so we can get as many people to the chat, as many angry people to the chat as we can. So uh, so uh, and don't forget, folks. Even if you're upset with what happened with the Jets, make sure you smash that like button. You're not upset with Drew and I. We're still here spending our night with you. So, um, look, it's 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 a tale as old as time. And, and how many people have, have said this for this Jets club? And we saw some good instances of it, getting guys in front of the net, taking away Blackwood's eyes. And we saw some other in, in examples. Like there was one, I don't know if it was in the second or the third period, but Pierre-Luc Dubois, like in front and just kind of, you know, sitting there waiting to try and tip as opposed to, you know, taking away, letting him screen him and 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 trying to bury a rebound. So um, I understand. But at the same time, like I said, it's one of those situations where, look, Cole Perfetti's got to feel great. I mean, he's gone, what, was it eight games? Mm-hmm. Feels like he hasn't scored since it's like at least a month ago, right? It was January 18th. It's been a long I think it was time. January, I think it was January 18th he had his last goal. So so he's oh, looking. So that, guess what? That's a month from now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly I, I think I'm not. Yeah. I think it was. I think it was about a month ago that he scored his last goal. So, and we said, I mean, look, you can't be on the second line and not produce. I mean, that's one of the keys for this. I keep knocking my ears out, my ear, my uh, headphones out through here. But that's January twenty first was his last goal. Okay. The game, the game at Ottawa. Okay, so just a shade under a month, but yeah. like it's not good, right? You need you need to be able to a producer on that second line. Although is he on the second line or the third line? Who knows? But anywho. The point is that you, you have to be able to, to do that, and he, he does, and uh, credit to him. We thought on the play it looked like um, Josh Morrissey would have break, broken Dustin Bufflin's record for uh, most points by a defenseman with uh, his 56. But, of course, uh, Mark Shifley did get a stick on it, uh, the Neil Pionk shot. So, um, look, credit the guys in front for creating chaos. Mm-hmm. That's what we've talked about, and that's what the Jets needed to do. 
and sure enough, it leads to their goal. Yeah, unfortunately for the Jets, the Devils tie, tie it up 19 <laughs> seconds blink. later. Don't blink. Don't blink, exactly. The success was fleeting. Dawson Mercer, his 14th of the season, assisted Nico Hishier and Dougie Hamilton, uh, ties it up at 1-1. And this is, well, I mean, it, it goes to Mercer uh, for the goal, but it's really Nate Schmidt's goal. And it's sort of an unfortunate play. Uh, it gets sort of caught up in, in, in Blake Wheeler's equipment, and then it just sort of drops uh, at his feet, and, and Mercer is able to get the puck uh and uh, it's just sort of a broken play and then he feeds it you know towards the front of the jets net and nate schmidt in an attempt to defend the pass uh accidentally knocks it past connor hellbuck tying it up at one and it's just a uh, it's just a bit of an ugly play all around uh, a bit of a broken play that goes to the advantage of the new jersey devils in this case um you know you could just see it uh, you almost saw it developing that it's like okay when wheeler wasn't able to find it up in his equipment and then right. when it just sort of falls and and you know hey, you know it's hard to blame anyone for this. And, you know, obviously, you know, Nick Schmidt wasn't intending to score on his own goal. I, I think we're, we're pretty clear on that one. I don't think anybody thinks that that was what was happening, but in any event, that's what ties it up at one all at that point in the uh, late in the first period. Were you going to say something else? I couldn't. No, tell. I was going to say, I thought you wanted to say anything, some, say something, but I can keep going. No, no, no. I, I, I was about to, and then I was waiting for you because you had a, uh, you kind of took a breath, so I said, "Okay, well, I'll let Drew. Maybe no, he's got that additional." Was, that, was, that was oxygen, so they, so I don't ah, pass out. That's what that fair, was. Fair, that it is critical for your yeah. brain to to make sure you have oxygen, there, Drew. So, I mean, yeah, it's an unfortunate situation for the Jets who who get that goal, and then 19 seconds later, you're you're fishing it out of the back of your net, and mm-hmm. and it it can't feel good for them because I mean, anytime you have a, a letdown, which is what that is, is a letdown. If you you know a team responds. I mean, suddenly you're 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 on your heels when you should be feeling good about yourself. So an unfortunate situation for the Jets to find themselves in, you know, tie in a tie game one all because again, it's just a, a, a I would say a casualness. That's what it came across to me was mm-hmm. a bit of a casualness by the Jets uh, today against again a team a Devils team. This is a really good Devils team. They're re- and, they're and really good, really good, and it's and they're not like a top heavy. Although Jack Hughes is amazing, but they're not a top Hugh, top top Hughes. They're not a top heavy team in the sense that they've got depth. Like they, I mean, their their top level is very good, but you know what I'm saying. Like they're not only a, a one line team. Well, the the bottom of their roster is better than the bottom of the Jets roster. Oh, I mean, no it, you know, it, it, that's just what it is. I mean, it, you know, they're you know, they just are. I mean, I don't know. You know, I I, I started a comment because I thought it was actually relevant from uh, Jason Eastwood. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It wasn't that long ago. Um, you know, do you think the man aligning on the top line was bonus saying to Chevy, "We need someone now"? I, I do a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I do think that there's a little bit of, hey, this he just, is what I, I, I have just, to work with. I think he just played ice hockey as a kid, and maybe he knew that you know sometimes you put a couple of, a couple of, a, a, a couple, bruiser. a couple of skinnies with a fatty, you know, like I think that's what he was thinking. Well, you know, I, I don't, th- I mean, look, I, I it, you know, Rick Bonus has been around this league for a lot longer than than and, and knows more about hockey than I'll ever, or has forgotten more about hockey than I'll ever know. But yeah. I do think that there is an element of him saying, look, this is the roster that that I currently have to work with. And sure, I could call up Jansen Harkins, or sure, I could call up uh, Axel Janssen Fialbi. And depending on the status of Nikolai Ehlers, you might see a call up of that nature uh, for tomorrow's game. Uh, of course, Sam Gagne is still in the press box. But you can see you know, that I do think that there's an element of saying, look, you got to give me some more. I, I, mm-hmm. I've squeezed all the lemon juice I can yeah. out of these guys. I need a I need a new citrus to to be able to 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 be able to make some juice with. Who's so, going to Florida? Yeah, I'm torturing an analogy is what I'm doing. Yeah, How much I can say that I can say that for sure. But I do think there's an element of, of, of Rick Bowen is sort of waving the white flag and saying, "Hey, it's time for that injection of, of talent. It can't wait until March the third. Um, whether or not that's going to happen. I don't expect that's going to all of a sudden happen overnight tonight. I don't expect yeah. that all of a sudden it's going to be like, you know, he's going to be calling up panicking or, or running around. But I do think there's a, definitely a little bit of a, a sign to the general manager, throw me a bone. We need a little bit of, we need a talent infusion here uh, because what we currently have is lacking. Uh, one all at this point, late in the first period, the Jets take a 2-1 lead uh, before the period's up. Neil Pionk, as I mentioned, he got a good game. This is uh, a, a shot from the point uh, that really just beats Mackenzie Blackwood. There is some some uh, bodies in front. 
you know, I think Mason Appleton was it was in front of the net here, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. You are uh, right. again taking his eyes away. Brendan Dillon and Mark Shifley get the assists, and this is what you want. You want traffic to the net, and good things happen. And a good thing happened here with Neil Pionk beating Blackwood clean from the point. It's our Seagram shot of the game. Seagram's 83, Manitoba's number one whiskey available at any of your local Manitoba liquor mart or wherever your finest spirits are available. But this is what it is. It's a, a shot from the point that the Jets need and traffic in front. Nothing pretty about it, but just a nice play uh, by Dylan to set off Pionk. And Pionk can shoot the puck. Whatever his shortcomings are, he can definitely still fire the puck. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, look, the, the key point was that, I mean, I thought from that goal was that Mason Appleton was in front of the net. And, and, and that's what you needed. That's what, how the jets need to score goals. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's exactly how they got that second goal was because Appleton took away the eyes. And as a result, you know, you do that. And if he doesn't, then maybe he gets a chance at a rebound, but for the, for, for a jets club that, that is, you know, right now you need those goals. That's what you needed to do. And, and look, it's, it's a good thing for Neil Pionk to have a little bit of confidence. I mean, maybe there's the one positive from, from this hockey game is that Neil Pionk maybe feels a little bit better mm-hmm. about himself. But ultimately, like I said, that, you know, you've got a two, one lead and you're feeling pretty good about yourself after 20 minutes in New Jersey. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the prettiest because you, because you've also scored all three goals in the game. Well, that's right. You, you, it's, it should be a three, nothing lead, but I mean, yeah, uh, you've scored all three goals. Exactly. Right. But you know, it wasn't the prettiest period, but you have a, you have a two, one lead. Nothing happens in the third, in the second period. Nothing but a lot of close calls. More for the Devils than they were for the Jets. A lot of posts. Uh, a lot of posts. Devils had what three posts in that in that in that uh, uh, second period. Kevin Stenland uh, has a glorious opportunity for the Jets. Talk about a guy who I want to call a stick manufacturer. Well, I mean, his stick blows up in his hands, and you know, and uh, preventing him. Well, you know, it's sort of it's hard to tell. It's a bit of a chicken and the egg there. Did the stick explode? And that's what caused him to miss the net or did he miss the net? And then the stick exploded. Uh, it sort of looked a little bit that he missed the net first and then the stick sort of blew up uh, afterwards, whatever it was, it was a missed opportunity because a two goal lead in this game, it would have been a huge one for the Winnipeg jets. Uh, and had the, you know, the devils were obviously snake bit for a little while. They're getting three posts uh, in the second period, but after 40 minutes and this jets team has by and large, been a pretty good team. When leading after 40 minutes, they did have that 2-1 lead, despite being what I would say outplayed, uh, you know, by the New Jersey Devils for the most part. Yeah, and and again, you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, well, we just need one more period. And, and look, this is an important win for the Jets. Mm-hmm. You've got a team, a, a Devils team that, like I said, they've been very good at home. They've been very good overall this season, but they did play last night. Right. And you, you're thinking, okay, their legs. Remember, we always kind of talk about that. You know, players will say, well, it's great in the first period, not so good in the third, or they got rid of all the, you know, lactic acid in their legs, so now they're good for the third. But regardless of the way the Jets look at it or the Devils or whomever, it's a 2-1 lead after 40 minutes. And, and you know, you've got an opportunity to kind of erase how you feel about that Columbus game. And, and again, like I said, it's not like they played – I mean, the funniest part about the Columbus game, it was a point I wanted to make, Look at what Columbus did over the, and not forget about their game against uh, Arizona. I think they're losing two nothing uh, right now against. Is it two nothing right now in that game? It's uh, two Drew? one now. Two one. Okay. Two one. Yeah. But but the, but the fact is that like their last four games, mm-hmm. just 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 to just to keep it into perspective, because I think it's important to to know because everybody's losing their minds. Remember the Jets dominated say the first and and third periods. They just didn't have a great second, but the. The Jets, the the Jackets beat the Leafs, the Jets, the Stars, and lost to these same Devils by one goal. Yeah. So, I, I mean, again, they're, they're, playing, that, they're playing spoiler. Yeah, but I'm saying like they, it's not like you lost. I, I know they're the 32nd ranked team, but they again they beat some other good teams. Like the next night or the night after, they beat the Devil, the the Stars four one, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's not you know it's worth noting, I, I guess yeah, I should say. So if you're the Jets, you're feeling good about, relatively speaking, you do you know and, and what's his name uh, Corpus Allo was excellent in that in that in that win for mm-hmm. columbus so but you, you know you can't really hang your hat it feels especially this time of the year you can't you know there's it, the moral victories are are, are very um yeah you know, they're, they're, hollow. they're hollow they're hollow is they're what hollow they are. and so 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 but what, what i'm saying is that you wanted to try and you know kind of push off of that now the jets chose not to skate this morning and instead chose to go for uh you know to have a media availability at 3 30 
And again, like I said, ultimately you're sitting there going, you're feeling good about yourself, but you need that period. You need the third period. I need to come out the right way in the third period. And the Jets didn't. The Jets well, you know, out- hang on, hang on. Let me disagree with you there. I thought okay. to start the third period for the first minute and a half or so, they yeah. did. Yeah. First couple minutes of that third period, I thought they came out strong. And then the tide turned for me on that. Hor- it didn't lead to a goal. Mm-hmm. But that horrible decision and that horrible cross ice pass by Mark Shifley uh, in the, in the Jets' own zone, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. that led to a, a scoring opportunity at the very least for the New Jersey Devils is to me when the period turned. I thought mm-hmm. that they started the third decently strong. They they came out at the opening faceoff, and I believe they put the puck in deep into the Devils' zone, and that they spent a little bit of time in the Devils' zone trying to manufacture something. Ultimately, it didn't man. The, nothing was manufactured as a result, but it's how they wanted to start the period for at least the first ninety to one hundred and twenty seconds. And then yeah. when Shifley made uh, 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 that goofy play, a goofy decision. Mm-hmm. You know, and it didn't lead to a goal, so I'm not saying it was the reason that uh, you know that they that they lost or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But but it was just from then on is where to me it looked like the Jets were on their heels. That to me was the 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 point in the third period where New Jersey started to take over. Yeah, and then they took over for the end of the you know the the period. You know that's just how it was. The Jets, you know, the Devils decided okay, we're a better team than the Winnipeg Jets, and they are. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the win. And Fabian uh, Zetterland gets the Devils uh, to tie the game. It was Henrik Zetterberg for a second. I thought it was Henrik Zetterberg for a second too, but (laughs) Fabian Zetterland, his sixth of the year at the 502 mark of the third period, assist to Eric Halla. Uh, and it's a low to high play, and we know how difficult those are for goalies where the puck is in deep and then it yeah. comes back out and nobody takes Zetterlin. The Jets are, are too busy uh, focused on, on, on the guys behind, uh, you know, behind the net and they lose their guy and Zetterlin comes in. And again, it starts, though, with a poor play by either you can pick, you can pick your poison, you can say it was a poor play by uh Kyle Connor, Kyle Connor, or is yeah. a poor play by uh, by Pierre Luc Dubois, sort of setting up Connor to fail with with the decision with everything else. Whoever you want to pinpoint, that's fine. But it's just a bad play at a time where the New Jersey Devils capitalize on those bad plays so very well and so very quickly. And as a result, five minutes into the sec- into the third period, it's tied up at, at, at two goals apiece, Dave. Yeah, and, and you can feel the momentum shift, right, Drew? And whether it was, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes into that third period or wherever it was, mm-hmm. the fact is that the Devils, which shouldn't make a lot of sense given the fact, like I said, that they played last night, were the team that was coming on. And we're the, and look, we're talking about, what are we talking about? We're talking about a healthy Jets club. Yeah. We're not talking about, the, we're not, remember, this is, there's no, there's the excuses are gone, right? This is no longer a Jets club that is dealing with seven players who are injured. Mm-hmm. This is a healthy Jets team with the exception of David Gustafson, who's in a non-contact uniform right now. Right. So uh, there's there's really no excuse not to, and you know how desperate this is. Like, you know, look, it's a murderer's row of teams that you're playing, right? The New York Rangers, the Islanders or whatever. But And then they're you've got Colorado. Team. Yeah, they're I mean, a playoff we, team. We, you know, we say the Islanders are whatever, uh, and, and, you know, they're not, they're not going to be one of the better teams in the East, but the Islanders have 63 points. Last time I checked, the Jets have 69 points. So it's not like the Islanders are that much worse than the Winnipeg Jets are. No, no. And again, I'm just saying that the Islanders have been up and down similar, right, to, a little right. bit similar to the Jets. They've been up and down, but I'm just saying that, so you've got an Islanders team, but they're not like the Rangers. No, like the Rangers the, they're not, are, they're not are, the, are, the Rangers, the Devils, you know, we know, we know that those teams are some of the best and the, some of the legitimate uh, cup contenders. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So you knew that this was a game that you could, and look, the, the, not that any team wants to lose a game, but the Devils are feeling good about themselves going in and beating Pittsburgh. And if they lose this game, you know, they've kind of got a ready-made uh, excuse, if you will. And instead, they they didn't. They they continue to to pour it on. And, you know, ultimately right now, a, a 2-1 game for a 2-1 game for the Jets again. But when you don't play aggressively and, and, and Rick Bonus's, you know, structure doesn't call for he calls to protect the lead. Right. He doesn't necessarily call to to continue to play the way in theory, the way you have been in order to maintain a lead or to, sorry, to add to your lead. And so as a result, now you've now got a tie game as opposed to, you know, a potentially a 3-1 lead for yourselves. 
Yeah, exactly right. And there wasn't a tie game for very long. In fact, it was a tie game for only a minute and 51 seconds uh, until Miles Wood gets his ninth of the year. Uh, assist to Michael McLeod uh, on this one. Uh, and Ryan Graves, not pardon me, not Ryan Graves, Jesper uh, Boquist is the one who also gets the uh, the assist on this one. And it's again, it's a low to high play. And that's exactly what this sort of very similar to the tying goal. But Adam Lowry needs to be harder on the puck. They've, they've, they've chatted with somebody off screen. Uh, you know, uh, the, you know, Adam Lowry needs to be harder on the puck. The Jets need to win puck battles in this in situation. In this third period, how many puck battles did the Winnipeg Jets win? How many times when there was a 50-50 puck were the Jets the team that came out with that puck, whether it was in the defensive zone or if it was in that offensive zone? How many times did the Jets end up winning the puck battle? You think back to the play on the power play, the one where Ehlers got injured. That's a puck battle. It's a two-on-two -two puck battle. Ehlers comes in, and then they still don't win that puck battle. And then to, and it's dumped the length of the ice, and then the whistle blows because Ehlers is down on the ice injured. The Jets didn't win the necessary puck battles, and this is a rested – you know, winning puck battles is all about will. That's all it is. It's about you saying, I'm not going to be defeated. I'm going to do this. There's an element, of course, of strength and uh, uh, and, and uh, not effort, but the amount of, of energy you have. The Devils on the second half of a back-to-back -back in the third period of a tie game, they shouldn't have that much energy left. The Jets, the more desperate of the two teams, should be the team that wins those puck battles, but they didn't tonight. And that, to me, is a problem. They didn't. They were soft. They were soft on the puck. They made soft plays. And you cannot win in the NHL if you do not make hard plays. Being soft is a recipe for defeat. And that's often what you saw, particularly in this third period, Dave. Yeah, I'm just muting myself in case the sound from the Zambonis is being picked up too loudly. If it's not, let me know, Drew. But You're fine. Um, Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, the, the perfect example of it was Adam Lowry coming through the neutral zone. And, you know, I didn't remember what devil player came behind him and just stole the puck out of, away from him. And it's just too slow. And it wasn't decisive enough. And mm -hmm. that, to me, I think was – and I saw the – I highlighted the comment earlier in the show, but that was – it's true. The, the Devils were played fast. The Jets didn't. The Jets played a slow game, I thought, tonight. And I think I, <laughs> the Jets can't win when they play a slow game. This Jets game is predicated on speed. And so if you're going to play slow, you're not going to have a lot of success, my, my, my thoughts. And so that's one of the things the Jets needed to improve, and they didn't throughout the course of the game. And as a result, you know they were they were they were standing around a lot. I thought, and so yeah, I mean, uh, suddenly, a, a, like I said, you said, Drew, a, a two-one lead, and you're sitting on it, and and instead it becomes a two-all game. That's right. It becomes a two-all game, and the Jets, and then it becomes three-two. So it's three-two at the six fifty-three mark of the third period. Okay, the Jets get two power play opportunities. Albeit one of them was an abbreviated power play, but Miles Wood takes that cross-checking penalty in the offensive zone. Thomas Tatar takes that hooking penalty on Saku Manalainen when the Jets were shorthanded, turning to a four-on-four, -four, and then a Jets power play. How do the Jets take advantage of these opportunities? The new look revamped power play, not necessarily a one and a two, but a one A and a one B. Well, it's more like maybe a two A and a two B or a three A and a three B because the Jets don't take advantage. They get Get a couple nice setups as we talked about, or as I think I talked about earlier. Cole Perfetti uh, just shanked the shot. I mean, that's about as, as, as you know. It's you know, you, you, sometimes you shank a shot in golf. Shank, you know, sometimes uh, good players in the NHL shank a shot. They didn't need a shank there. They needed a, a shot. That they needed a shot that was going to be within uh, kick in birdie range. Unfortunately, it didn't happen there. Josh Morris, he had an opportunity. He doesn't get all that he wants. And then the four, you know, the the abbreviated power play, the five on. 4-1 was even worse there's just right now the Jets just don't seem to have any connectivity there just doesn't seem to be any sort of conduciveness to how the Jets are going about their 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 play especially on the power play uh you know it just it's a struggle everything right now is a struggle for the Winnipeg Jets 
And you saw that tonight, I thought, exemplified in the third period where you give up three goals in the third. You had a 2-1 lead. It ends up in a 4-2 defeat. Obviously, Dawson Mercer getting his second of the game, his 15th assist to Eric Hall and Ryan Graves. That's into the empty net. He's just fat. He outraces Cole Perfetti here. And we know that Perfetti's uh, foot speed is never, is not the best attribute in, in that he has in his game. And Dawson Mercer, admittedly, he had a bit more of a head start or he had sort of was, uh, was, you know, wasn't uh, starting from standstill and that helped him in, in, in defeat and getting to the puck before Cole Perfetti, but he does. And he puts it into the empty net and the Jets lose tonight four two, Dave. They do. And I'm not going to give you any sort of insider analysis on an empty net goal Drew, yes. because you just, you know, succinctly uh, assessed it, but ultimately look, this is a game the Jets, you know, really couldn't, afford to lose obviously they could afford to lose it but as you said during the drew mandel experience mm -hmm. which i was keenly listening to while watching overtime and uh and the shootout i mean the the fact is that you know the teams around the jets are winning yeah. you know the colorados the minnesotas and those are you know teams that you're going to be uh vying for, for these spots and you don't want to mm -hmm. fall out of you know the, the second spot so you've got to maintain this and that's you're not going to do it and you know one of the things that i find is curious we always talk about systems well the Moose currently have the second best power play in the AHL. They also have the fifth, fifth best penalty kill in the AHL. Now, the Moose have some very good personnel on their team. They've got a lot of guys who are, you know, the Jansen Harkins, the Axel Janssen Fielbys, Dominic Tonnados, a lot of guys who are who would be, you know, you could say fourth liners in the NHL who are here in the AHL right now. But I mean, this is a power play that's working, and it's been working when those guys were up with the Jets and they're working with other personnel. So these two teams are supposed to be running the same system. This one was three for three tonight, three for four, sorry, tonight, and uh, and and continued to score and got them back in the game. So, I mean, you just, you talk about one of those, I mean, again, we're not going to make this a Manuk Moose minute quite yet, but we will after. But the fact of the matter, Drew, is that this was the difference in, a, you know, again, the power play, the power play we've talked about. It, and I know mm -hmm. they worked on it. They made all these alterations and changes, but I mean, ultimately, look at the difference. This was the game the Moose were tra trailing 3-1, 4-2, and the power play is what got them back in this hockey game. So sometimes the power play is a, is a reason, you know, like I said, that's, it, it's, it's, it's a man advantage for a reason and you have to take advantage when you, when you're given those opportunities. And if you don't, it ends up, you know, potentially killing your opportunity to win a game. And it certainly did not help the Winnipeg Jets tonight. The Jets lose 4-2 to the New Jersey Devils. The team's struggle continues. They struggle to score goals. They struggle to put wins together. 5-5 five and five in their last 10. Losers of two in a row. And it isn't getting any easier as they have the Rangers tomorrow night and the Islanders on Wednesday. When we come back, more on tonight's Jets-Devils game. We'll do a Manuk Moose Minute. Dave's down in town watching, as he watched the Moose uh, lose in a shootout earlier tonight. Some contests to give away or some, some giveaways as part of the illegal curve contest much more to come it's a sunday evening it's a holiday long weekend you have nowhere else to be so stick with us it's the illegal curve post game show drew mandel dave manuk all of our friends were live on youtube and all of our social media platforms Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, John Stewart, Dennis Miller, Brad Garrett, the biggest acts and all the up-and-comers. They've all made their mark at Rumors Comedy Club, North America's longest-running independent comedy club. Rumors has kept Winnipeg laughing for over 25 years. When was the last time you laughed out loud? Make it a great night out with friends or book your office or birthday party, even a fundraising event at Rumors. Get all the details and dates on upcoming shows at RumorsComedyClub.com. He winds up. Oh, looks like Ezzy took that one right in the choppers. A blistering fast puck hurts like H-E double hockey sticks. That's why I let the pros at Linden Market Dental Center turn my yow into wow. Get your brilliant smile back with state-of-the-art restorative and cosmetic dentistry from real pros. And remember, always wear a mouth guard. Now that's solid on ice advice. Learn more at LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rollies and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small 
Just visit Rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at Rollies.com. Dave, my man, why are you in the car already? It's hours until game time. Uh, Drew, it's because I'm stressed out right now, driving around downtown Winnipeg, looking for a parking spot, and I'm not finding one. I've lost Ginsburg. I don't even know where that guy is right now. Dave, haven't I taught you anything? Do what I do. Pre-book your entire month's worth of game day parking with the Grid Park app. It's super easy to use and saves me both time and stress. Well, Drew, I'm not independently wealthy like you are. So I'm sorry that I don't have millions of dollars to pre-book my parking month in advance. What's that going to cost you? $25? How about five bucks? Come on, five dollars? No way. Five bucks. I'm not telling you a lie. And our listeners can get a free park with the new special promo code, Illegal Curve. Guess what? There's more. Come on. There's more, Drew. You're lying to me. What more could there be? Grid Park now has underground parking, so my car can stay warm during the game. So wait a second. Wait a second. All, All the driving around I do, looking for parking, minus 40. You're telling me I could be toasty warm in a car after the hockey game. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Underground parking. Just download the Grid Park app. That's G R Y D Park and use the code Illegal Curve. All one word. You'll park for free your first time. Hi, it's Drew from Illegal Curve here. Selling your home can be stressful, but it wasn't for me. Thanks to my friends at Zapia Group Realty, they made the process so easy. My home sold within 48 hours and with multiple offers. Zapia Group Realty took care of everything with their exquisite customer service and attention to detail. If you want to sell your home for more in less time, get started by talking to Frank and Mauro Zapia of Zapia Group Realty. Online at zapiagroup.com. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. From jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Duck's clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. 25 minutes before the top of the hour. Welcome back to the Illegal Curve post game show. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk. We're talking about the Jets and the New Jersey Devils. The Jets dropping a 4 2 decision to the Devils tonight. Get another kick at the can tomorrow evening against the New York Rangers. Post game show right around 8 40, 8 45 p.m. Central Time back here on our YouTube channel. Dave M will be in the comforts of his home as opposed to the comforts of his home away from home. That being, of course, whatever the Canada. Well, actually. Center. Don't be so sure, Drew. I'm, I'll be here tomorrow at two o'clock. Yeah, Super but I'll be there. there tomorrow at two o'clock too. It ain't going. It ain't, it ain't going all the way until eight forty-five. No, it won't be going. But I mean, the point is that once the game ends, I'm gonna have to. I might have to watch the first period here if I don't get out, finish my media responsibilities yeah, in time. But I'm saying that for the post game show, yeah, the fine. post game show, you're going to be at home. I if will. you're not home for the post game show, That's then we're going to come down there and stay in intervention. Shanked. Never mind, Shank. <laughs> you just might be living there. We may, you, you may have sold oh. your house and now you're just, you know, you're just in the yeah. dressing room all, all day yeah. long, you know, using the facilities. Sure. Uh, a couple things I wanted to highlight about yep. uh, the Jets and the revamped forward line, some numbers. Okay. Uh, I knew it was ugly. I didn't know it was this ugly. The Corsi four percentage of Kyle Connor, Pierre Luc Dubois, and Saku Manalai. Mean with, without a shot, uh, twenty six point six seven is their Corsi four percentage uh, in tonight's solid. game. Solid. Uh, it's not solid. That's uh, that's horrendous. I mean, that's <laughs> just uh, uh, unspeakably bad. So I hope that experiment doesn't last until tomorrow as well, because uh, that clearly isn't going to work. I mean, Connor and Dubois. I, I just don't know why they're not playing with Ehlers. I mean, th- that when that line was 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 put together yeah it was when working. Ehlers returned they were dominant yeah and sure i get maybe you don't want you, you can't look i get the argument for not having too top heavy of a team but mm-hmm. it doesn't matter you know you, you just can't put saku man in that position it's not fair to him it's not fair to connor and dubois i mean you know Ehlers, lowry and wheeler were pretty good 53.85 percent coursey four yeah, yeah. Bit better than average, you know. Seven, they, you know, seven six was was their core C four there. So I mean, sure, fine. Okay, you know, I got a little bit of time for that, but you know, you, you can't do it at the expense of Connor and Dubois because right. they're two of your best players. So that has yeah. to change tomorrow. Um, Perfetti, Shafley, Appleton, they were forty percent, just you know, forty one percent. The only line that was really any good 
uh, possession wise, Corsi four wise, uh, Baron, Stenland, and Kuhlman. This is all five on five, of course. Yeah, they yeah. were up at around 73%. So, okay, there you go. You can keep that line together. I'm fine with that. But, you know, you, you, you put Appleton, uh, you just got to find a way to, to, to change these things around because Manalinen, uh, just isn't, isn't acceptable five on five. It's just not good enough. Five, he's on not five. in your top six. He yeah, doesn't need to be in your top six. He, he's a, you know, look on this Jets team. He's got to be on your fourth line. That's right. At five on five. Now on a good team on, I mean, here, here's the barometer. This is the yeah. barometer for all the players that we all know and we all love and we all evaluate. Would they play for the Tampa Bay lightning in a playoff series? Mm-hmm. That's the barometer. That's what I, that's my internal barometer for determining, you know, that's the benchmark for me. You know, okay. you want to, you, if you want to be, if you want to model a team or you want to sort of evaluate yourself against the team, use yeah. the Tampa Bay lightning because sure. all they do is win. So, you know, which you know goes to my question yesterday where I asked Murat, where, where would Adam Lowry? I didn't ask it in this specific I was way. You actually wrote it. To I Murat. wrote it to Murat because of the audio issues, but you know, where would Adam Lowry play? Where would he be slotted in on a Tampa Bay Lightning team? Well, mm-hmm. he wouldn't be a third line center for Tampa Bay. No, he'd be a fourth line center, which is what he, we've talked about for a long time in the, on this show. Right, exactly right. So, I mean, uh, that's just a bit of an aside, but I thought those numbers were were relevant, and I wanted they to are. bring them up yeah. uh, just uh, you know to, to talk about uh, the struggles of this team and sort of to provide a, a real, uh, honest evaluation of where this team is compared to some of the other teams around it uh in the in in the nhl in any yes. event uh dave m was down at, and still is of course at the canada life center where home away from home you're home away oh we lost true this is fan boys and girls this is fantastic i thought we were just gonna drew's gonna intro oh he's back sorry folks i was excited for a second you know go ahead drew whoever designed the mouse that i'm using should be shot <laughs> out of a cannon there is this tiny little button it's called the kill button. Yeah, it, it just kills my feed. Like I, I, I press this button. The sort of like I'm moving my mouse and I press it up against my my sort of platform that I have my camera on. Yeah, it just kills my feed. It's just it's like an automatic exit button for whatever <laughs> reason. I don't know why it exists. I should probably disconnect it. I'm or put sure. like a little piece of tape over it, maybe. Well, I'm sure that there's a setting that I could that I, if I ever had the brain power to necessarily do it, I would go ahead and and do so. But instead, I just keep accidentally pressing this button and I get rid of myself. But in this case, I was getting rid, of, getting ready to say that it's time for... Put on your antlers. It's time for the Manuk Moose Minute on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. There we go. There we go. Well, as folks can tell, I am at Canada Life for the Moose homestand, which continued tonight against the Grand Rapids Griffins. Uh, they have already, of course, won the first two games. They've actually, coming into tonight's game, had won four straight, Drew, uh, and five had points in five straight games. And so I had to look back. When was the last time the Moose had won five in a row? was back in the 21-22 season. No, sorry, the 20, uh, 2021 season, I think it was. It was back in April of 21 when they won five in a row. They'd taken that. That was back in the Canadian division. So they'd taken, I think, three against uh, Belleville and then two against Stockton. So... The Moose were looking to 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 match that tonight against the Grand Rapids Griffins, and unfortunately for them, much like the game against the Iowa Wild, they gave up a goal on the first shot, 53 seconds into the game, so things weren't looking so rosy here in Winnipeg for the Manitoba Moose. But Axel Janssen Fielbe, who's uh, not pouting, he's scoring goals here in the AHL, scored his second goal in three games for the Moose, just about a minute and four seconds later. But for Manitoba, it was a short-lived tie game because uh, Grand Rapids scored two goals in quick, not not quick succession, but one about three minutes after that to make it 2-1. And then it was 3-1 with about five minutes to go in the first period. And that was all that she wrote for Arvid Holm. Mark Morrison gave him the hook. I'm not so certain as to whether, I, of course, I didn't get a chance to go down and do media after the game, but. I'm not thank certain. You, if thank was, you for sacrificing. Yeah, I know. I was very, I was considering doing like a, I was actually going to bring everyone through with the, with my phone and I was going to do it while <laughs> maybe talking. If they, maybe if they had won. Yeah. Had they won, I might've considered that, but because they didn't, I didn't get a chance to do that. So anyways, the moose were down three, one, and it was going to uh, heading to the, almost heading to the second period at a late power play in the first period. And sure enough, Jansen Harkins, who's done nothing but score 
and produce for the Moose since he's been down in the HL. He scores with one second left. I didn't actually think the Moose would have enough time to get this goal, but sure enough, Harkin scored uh, on a nice pass by the duo who always connect together, Leon Gavonke and Declan Chisholm. So it was a 3-2 lead for the Griffins going into the second intermission. And coming out of the second, you thought, okay, the Moose got lucky and now they're going to have to find their game. But of course, unfortunately for them, it was the Griffins on an, a rare kind of a brain fart from the 2019 fourth rounder, Henry Nickenen, who who made, I don't like the pass. I don't too many, often guys go backward. I don't understand. I understand you want to give it to the, the, the defenseman to quarterback it, but I can't stand when you've got your, your guys going North and then you put that puck back South, because if you, if you have a turnover, it's going to end up in the back of your net. And that's what happened with the moose. So sure enough, a three, two game that was manageable became four, two, and you're thinking, okay, well, <laughs> that's not so good for them. Yeah. And even though they've been rolling and Grabman Rapids is way behind them in the rearview mirror, these points are critical because they're trying to catch Texas. They're trying to catch Milwaukee, they're trying to stay ahead of or, or connect with uh, Rockford and keep Iowa behind them. So, you know, it's tight in the central uh, as the Jets are experiencing. So, so too is it for the Moose. And so it wasn't looking great, but two goals in 45 seconds, both on the power play, one by Leon Gavanke, his 13th of the season nice pass across from Jansen Harkins and then Wyatt Bon Giovanni he scored his ninth on a nice pass by Billy Hainola so suddenly now a 4-2 game becomes four all here in Manitoba almost I think it was close to 5,000 people in the crowd which is pretty impressive given the fact that there was a Jets game supposed to be I think 6,500 to 7,000 tomorrow for uh, superhero day today was Dylan Sandberg bobblehead night they're giving away the bobbleheads so uh, folks, I'll be there tomorrow. I just ask you all to single file when you're coming to get your autographs from me, sure. the superhero is sure. being honored tomorrow. Fair enough. So that's yeah. what Drew's going to do. But anyways, so um, that's what, uh, how it would end after the third. And I was like, oh man, I'm like, I'm like watching it. I'm like, oh no, please don't go to overtime. <laughs> sure enough, goes to overtime. So I text Drew and I were chatting in the pregame just before we got underway. I'm like, well, Drew, let's just, and then of course, Moose took two pa- penalties. So they had to kill it. They had Jeff Mallott had one at the end of the game that they had to kill into the overtime. And then Billy Hainola took one at the end of the power play, at the end of overtime, sorry, that the Moose managed to kill. So the Moose special teams was were phenomenal tonight. I think they were, again, they were three for four on the power play as far as I can remember. And they were, I think they were, they gave, they were five for five on the kill, I believe. So uh, yeah, five for five on the kill and three for four on the power play. So special teams were rolling with, uh, with Manitoba, but it went to that thing called the shootout. And so the Moose weren't able to uh, to overcome that. The Rockford, uh, Rockford, Grand Rapids scored twice, and the Moose were only only able to score once. I don't remember who took the last shot for the Moose. It, it was Jeff Mallott. Jeff Mallott had to score, and he was unable to do so. And as a result, um, the Moose ended up losing. So their their winning streak of four games became a point streak of six games. And some notes: uh, Simon Lundmark back in the lineup. The uh, two thousand and what was he? He was a 2019 second rounder. And then um, Alex Limoges, who's the leading scorer, he got injured in the first period, didn't play periods two and three of the last game against Iowa. He wasn't in the lineup. He's day to day. And um, uh, who was oh, Cole Meyer, alternate captain. He was a late scratch for the Moose. And so we'll see if he's available for tomorrow. And uh, we'll see who they go with, whether it's Arvid Holm or Oscar Salmonen, who was good in relief of Holm. There you go, Dave M. with the Manuk Moose Minute, as only Dave M. can. And, of course, he'll do another one tomorrow night after the Jets and the Rangers. Be a little easier tomorrow, though, Drew. Yeah, less stressful time-wise, but uh, something to look forward to. Not easy. Evening. No, not, not easy, easy at all. I uh, wanted to, not a lot of commentary coming out of the dressing room just yet. Uh, very rude of both Mike and Ken who are on site to not immediately be tweeting everything. I mean, come sure. on, guys. Some of us have uh, post game shows we need to do. Uh, this one from Mike McIntyre, though, that uh, caught my eye about 30 minutes ago. Hellebuck. Mike asked uh, Connor Hellebuck if the Jets are now finding ways to lose games that they were winning earlier this year. Yeah. The quote in response from Connor Hellebuck is, I don't really feel like answering that question, to be honest. I want to keep things positive and keep things on the right side. So you can probably pretty easily read between the lines as to what you think the answer that Connor Hellebuck hmm. uh, didn't give in so many words actually was to that question by Mike McIntyre. So things not great in Winnipeg Jets land, losing tonight 4-2 to the New Jersey Devils. Uh, before we wrap it up, let's uh, give away some merchandise. Sure. 
Okay, so of course, the Illegal Curve merchandise contest, we do it after each and every Winnipeg Jets game, just part of the Illegal Curve post-game show here. So the way to enter the merchandise contest, if you don't already know, you click the drop-down arrow on the YouTube channel, you see the link for the contest, click that link. You can also find that link on our website, illegalcurve.com. See all sorts of different things that you can do to gain entries and earn ballots. And the more of those things you do over the course of a month, the more entries you're going to get. One of those things, of course, is entering the unique code word that you can only find here on the post-game show or in the podcast edition of the show. Nobody guessed it. Nobody guessed it. The unique code word for tonight, Dave M. Don't mess with the devils, buddy. This very much a Seinfeld reference. David Putty, of course, the New Jersey Devils super fan. We're the Devils, the Devils. Yeah. Don't mess with the Devils, buddy. Don't. I added this buddy because I was. I generally wouldn't. I would have gone with "Don't mess with the Devils." Yeah. But I wanted to throw off Allen and Frosty because they. I figured they might think I would go Seinfeld, so I added the buddy, which is Putty does actually say "Don't mess with the Devils, buddy," but I wanted to make sure that. To throw those guys off yes exactly uh so don't mess with the devil's buddy is your unique code word no apostrophes nothing like that all caps do all one word can't use apostrophes so don't you dare even think about using them when you're entering in the unique code word for the, to gain your entries into the merchandise contest don't mess with the devil's buddy and if you enter that code word you may get your name drawn and as a result win some great jets merchandise from us here at illegal curve like today's winner dave m matthew mcmahon yeah well i was teeing you up to you know i don't know if he's related to vince and stephanie and shane and the rest of the mcmahon family but matthew what i don't think it's a different spelling is it isn't that Matthew Mc Mac Mc Mc Ma? I don't think it's McMahon. Isn't that how you spell McMahon? I think that's how you spell McMahon. No, I don't think that's how you spell Vince McMahon, though, Drew. Uh, okay. I think it's a different spelling. Now we shall go to the Google. Oh no! Apparently, it's not. Thank you. Sorry, right. we have got a correct uh, thing. He Thank is, you. in fact, Vince's son, Matthew McC- McMahon. Yes. Congratulations to Vince McMahon's son, Matthew McMahon. Uh, we're not <laughs> sure about uh, fact-checking that, but I uh, hope you don't anyways. Matthew McMahon, the winner of the Illegal Curve Merchandise Contest, uh, is uh, is the winner tonight. Oh, good. Roscoe is back. So that's pretty much a good sign that we should probably wrap up tonight's post-game show. Uh, Roscoe has been in, in rare form. So many of you have been in rare form as well. In Make the sure you chat. smash that like button before you go home. There you go. Smash the like button. Or I don't get to go home. Oh, I have Dave, to just stay here all night. All night long. You don't want that. Dave no, that's fine because there's another game in like in like tw- like 17 hours. So it's all good. Yeah, I know, but you you want to go home, and I think everybody else wants you to probably shower or shower. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Good things point. of that nature. Cleanse yourself, sleep in a warm bed. All those uh, all those little uh, small. Pieces. My hand for Druid suit. You might want to hang this thing up. You know. Wow, look deal. at you. Somebody's doing well. Well, ten years old. Okay, <laughs> you you. And it's ten years old, and you stole it from them. Is yeah. Oh, what yeah, happened. It's yeah. one of those yeah. like little leg tag things on that's itself. Right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. It still beeps every time you go into any yeah, sort of retail uh, location, actually. but uh, nonetheless. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, Matthew. <laughs> You're looking sharp, anyways. There, Dave. M. Thanks, the Drew. Jets losers tonight, four two. The Moose lose in a shootout. Both teams in action tomorrow. Uh, the Moose in the afternoon. All the latest on illegalcurve.com. The Ice and are also in action tomorrow, Drew. The Ice in action. Having one six straight games yes of course they never lose so just update me when they lose it's easier that way and the jets yeah they step up in weight class even higher against the new york rangers tomorrow in uh what is baby a challenging challenging matchup uh we want to say a big thank you to all of our sponsors here on the post game show Uh, and they also sponsor the saturday show and the website our friends at rumors restaurant and comedy club as frosty has outlined danverville Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday sold out. Tickets available Wednesday. Deborah De Giovanni on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Most of the Deborah shows are sold out except for Friday 9:45 and Saturday 9:45. Get your tickets now. Linden Market Dental Center. That's our buddy, Dr. Les Rikus, Frank Zappia of Zappia Group Realty. Of course, Maro Zappia as well. Betway, they're the title sponsor here of the post-game show. Tough Duck, Boston Pizza, Seagrams. Seagram shot of the game. That was Neil Pionk's shot. So congratulations to Neil Pionk for that esteemed victory. Rollies transfer, Grid Park, and the keg support these fine businesses because of their continued support. I dinner at the um, keg yesterday. It was good. There you go. Really good. There you go. And I got to tell you, it was packed. 
oh, it's, you try getting a table at the keg. It's like if you don't make it, you know, the announcement that if you don't like make the reservation like a week or two weeks ahead of time, yeah, like five thirty or eleven fifteen p.m. It's like those are your <laughs> only options. I'm like, I might have to figure something else out. Don't but, worry, yeah. Bailey. By the way, Drew Bailey's upset that we haven't had a tough duck winner. That's true. So I don't, I don't think I have one, <laughs> Andy. But really, uh, after all that, really, after I all could, that. I, I could pick uh, a winner. Okay, you want to pick a winner? Maybe we'll sure. just pick a winner and do it off air or something. Uh, no, I, I think people like to be uh, they like to be uh, celebrated. So if you have a tough duck co- comment, if you want to have a hardest hitting comment, Drew and I will keep the show running for two more minutes so you can win, be the winner. Yes, but if we can't guarantee that you're going to win. Uh, you know, then uh, uh, well, here here's a good one. I got this one from Bricktop. This is back going back about five minutes ago. So Bricktop, congratulations! This uh, because Man, you know this. Do you is remember what, what movie is Bricktop from? What movie is Bricktop? Well, I mean, I know Brick Tamlin is from uh, Anchorman. No, no, no. What? You can't look at the picture. You don't know what movie that's from? I, Come on, Drew. It's one of the best movies of all time. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. No, please. <laughs> knowing your taste in movies, it's probably from Mama's Boy or something. <laughs> first of all, that's, that's my, my boy. boy. Sorry. First of all. And no snatch. Come on. Oh, well, you see, I was never big. That's what, oh, Guy what right? Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. I've never been a good, never been a big guy. No, that, that movie's that movie's unbelievable. First of all, the cast is amazing Benicio del Toro, Brad Pitt's in it, that other guy, the guy who's oh, Jason Stratham's in it. Yeah, it's a good movie. Come I on. get mistaken for him all the time. It's really embarrassing. You and Stratham, yeah, like identical twins is what people sure. come up to us and say all the time is that we've basically been, uh. Uh, that, that you know, we look identical to each other in any event. Bricktop, if by some well done, Bricktop, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ellie can <laughs> Bricktop fed, fed people to pigs, Drew, just in case you're wondering. Well, I can understand that. That's that's also uh, that also makes he sense. He is very, he's as, as, as Don Cherry would say, he's a very fancy guy there, Rob. Bricktop, send me an email, Drew. Mediocre, at Doug doesn't like, oh, Doug, come on, yeah. really? You thought it was mediocre? I thought it was excellent. Uh, Drew at illegalcurve.com, or you can slide into my DMs at I C Drew, and we'll make sure that uh, that uh, we hook you up with a two courtesy of our friends. At you're gonna need it, tough duck. You're gonna need it. It's gonna be a little chilly, but that's okay. It's always warm here on the Illegal Curve post game oh, yeah. show. What oh, well. Farina's in it? Great cast, Drew. Come on, you're gonna. I, I own it. I'll, I'll lend it to you. Thank you, Maul. Maul's calling it a top five movie. Well, hang on. If you're gonna lend it to me, what am I gonna play it on? I don't know. You can put it. Don't you have a DVD player in your uh, in your laptop? No. You you have a CD-ROM drive in your in your in your laptop? No, not in this one. But I've got my old laptop. I could do it. Okay. Well, I mean, you I don't have a DVD it. player? Come on, Drew. I don't think we have a DVD player. Why would we have a DVD player? I have no idea. Maybe I mean, to watch Snatch. <laughs> apparently so. So you you're gonna have to lend me the movie and give me a DVD player. Other than that, I'll, I'll, there we go. I'll take a look at it. Well, uh, Thank you to everyone. We're going to see you tomorrow night. It's uh, the Illegal Curve Post Game Show tomorrow night, right around 845. Until then, uh, you can always check out the website, IllegalCurve.com. Uh, smash the like button if you haven't already do- done so. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the podcast. Tell your friends, tell your family. The best place to be after each and every Winnipeg Jets game, and again, Saturday mornings, is the Illegal Curve YouTube channel. For Dave Manuk, I'm your host, Drew Mandel. Thanks for joining us. This has been the Illegal Curve Post Game Show. Thanks for listening to this broadcast from Illegal Curve Hockey. For more great Illegal Curve content, subscribe to the Illegal Curve YouTube channel, follow at Illegal Curve on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and visit your online home for hockey in Winnipeg, IllegalCurve.com.